Hello, everyone. This is Stella Coombe Heath here, binge and emotional eating recovery specialist and mentor. And today I have a really special guest with me, Sheila. Uh, hello, Sheila. How are you going? <laughs> I'm doing good. Thanks. What about yourself, Stella? <laughs> oh, excellent. It's been such a nice sunny day here in Melbourne. So I'm excited about just the warm summery days coming through. <laughs> lucky you <laughs> <laughs> yeah absolutely Sheila is one of my beautiful clients and she's on the opposite end uh, she's in the Norman, northern hemisphere in uh, based in the UK um, in England and we've been working together now over the last uh, few weeks just in the food freedom program and Sheila has uh, generously decided that she'll help share her experience with, with everyone here listening. So thank you, Sheila, for being here today. Well, thank you very much for having me. Really, really very generous of you. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, amazing. So Sheila is also uh, a healer and spiritual guide, um, guidance um, coach and counsellor. So she's going to tell us a little bit more about herself. Uh, so Sheila, did you want to share a little bit more about you and what you do? Thank you very much, Stel. Yeah. Well, I live, as you say, in England. I live on a static houseboat on the River Medway in a, just outside a little village called Who, which always means Dr. Zeus to me um, <laughs> and those stories. Um, <laughs> Uh, just near the confluence with the Thames and the North Sea. So it's lovely. It's beautiful. Um, the most magnificent sunrises and sunsets. Um, and uh, although the boat is static and it's on the mud uh, for much of the day, with each of the incoming tides, um, the boat lifts. So it's a lovely sense of change and transition, which for me has fitted in really well with my kind of spirituality and then of course joining the program as well and that sense of encouraging fluidity and movement and change and transition and opportunity for doing things differently yeah 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 absolutely and sheila had just so many beautiful stories to share off the like about the boats and the tides and every session she'd kind of go, oh, the tide's in or this is what's happening and <laughs> I can see the swans. So that was always just so amazing. <laughs> and Sheila, did you want to share about your work and what you do, um, uh, all the amazing work that you do in the world? Thank you. Um, yeah, I work, I'm, you could call it spiritual counseling or spiritual direction or spiritual guidance. Um, any of those sorts of things, um, but it's counselling and coming from a perspective of spiritual growth. Um, yes, I work with some people who have no faith at all, um, because each of us is wanting to be seen, is wanting to be loved, and it's touching into that. Um, so that's essentially what um, I, I was a, a cleric in the Anglican Church for oh, nearly 30 years working in Ireland um, before I moved over to the UK to live with my partner and our dogs. <laughs> and um, really to be able to focus much more on that um, holistic approach to people's lives um, in a way that formal education doesn't necessarily touch into. I worked, uh, uh, I have been working for the last four years, I'm not sure that I'll continue, but for the last four years I've been working on a, a program um, with One Spirit Interfaith Foundation, uh, which prepares people for celebrancy work um, on the one hand, but most of all it's working with people's individual biographies um, so really to explore at a very deep level um, what's causing us to behave the way we do. Um, and it has a spiritual lens on that as well. And in terms of spirituality, all faiths are none, as it were. So I'm not tied to any one particular traditional outlook or anything like that. It's, um, it's listening to the heart, you know, mm. the heart is the spirit. Ah. Spirit is the connection with the universe, the multiverse the earth, the heavens, and so on. So yeah, so yeah. that's it. 
Beautiful. I love that. And um, I just love some of the stories you've shared with um, about your clients. And I think that's also why the two of us really um, connected really well. Um, so I'd love for you to share with us, Sheila, just what life was like for you with your relationship with food and body before the, uh, the Food Freedom Program. Thank you. Yeah, because it's been um, really um, eye opening. Um, many of my eyes, my internal eyes, <laughs> as well as my external eyes. Um, for a start, I think there was a real disconnect between my head and, and the rest of me. Um, so my head would view life through this particular lens and my body was viewing life through this particular lens. And um, food was very much my enemy um rather than seeing it now as actually and and this applies about so much of life doesn't it that just about everything is actually really good for us um uh, perhaps in moderation perhaps some things actually do react with us and to have the wisdom to say oh yeah much as i might drool at the thoughts of having that it's not going to do me any good or the escapism that i might achieve through that it's going to be so short lived. And this is where some of the techniques and things like that, that you have given me over the last um, number of weeks has been so helpful. You know, um, things like even just the practicality of breathing, my goodness me, as a spiritual <laughs> guidance person, I should be encouraging people to breathe through every, and I do. I saw, so you know, when they come to me and they say, oh, you know, this is happening and that's happening. And I say, okay, let's just breathe through that. Sheila, wake up. Speak to yourself as well. <laughs> Do this as well. So your 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 guidance in terms of of uh, yeah, you know, when you're facing um a food, a binge challenge or whatever, um breathe, breathe into it. And then your emotional freedom technique, your EFT, applying that and even just the very condensed version um to to um kind of work my way through whatever it is i would be very much a binge eater and, and emotional eater as well so when the poop hits the fan i want to hit the kitchen um, <laughs> and uh, you know to be able to say oh yeah i find myself in the kitchen opening up the cupboard whatever it is and then think oh yeah let's try some breathing here oh yeah what about a little bit of eft okay so what's really going on here what is it that's really underneath this particular urge. So life before the program was a worn path through the windows, through the doors, through the passageways, everywhere to the kitchen. <laughs> um, now kind of coming through the program, it's, oh yeah, look at the path going there. Do I actually want to go along that path? And sometimes I say, yes, I do. And I'll go through and I'll have my little bit of dark chocolate or whatever. And other times I think, well, no, actually, let's let's explore what's really happening here. Mm. And I began to laugh at myself a bit more, which is no bad thing at all. <laughs> <laughs> and that, you know, that is just so good. I, I love the, that you kind of embodied all of that. And, you know, you say you're laughing at yourself more. But it is a journey of compassion, right? We when we start or before I started my journey, it was all about, well, look what you've done. You've done this again, all that judgment and shame and guilt. And now approaching it from another side and just that's, Oh, what's really happening here? Like that's, you know, just such a nourishing way of, of being. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's what I've loved about working with you is the holistic approach to it. You know, Food, yeah, is obviously we need food to stay alive. Mm. Um, and food comes in so many different shapes and forms. Um, and it's the nourishing of the heart and the being, as well as the nourishing of the body. Um, and I love the way that all of this dovetails in the work that you do. It's fantastic. And the kind of, you know, I don't want to kind of give you a big head or anything, but the kind of character that you are and the personality <laughs> and the warmth that you bring. And you're absolutely right about the compassion and releasing judgment, judgment of self, judgment of, you know, this is good food, this is bad food. Because as you've said on any number of occasions, that's the stuff that we've inherited. 
Mm. That's the stories we've been told by the media, maybe by our families and so on and so forth. But actually, food is neutral. It doesn't come with a value judgment at all. It's us who imposes that on yeah. it. Yeah. And, and then when we're eating, we're eating judgment. And how sad is that? Is there not enough judgment going on in the world around us without us applying more to something else that we're then imbibing, ingesting, accepting yeah. into our beingness? Yeah, I love that. It's it's almost like putting a new spin to the you are what you eat, right? Because yeah. it used to be the, well, if you eat sugar or junk food, then you are junk. But I don't think it's yeah. that. It's you you actually eating the judgment <laughs> or the shame or the guilt. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So I've loved, I've loved working with you. You know, just you saying about shame and guilt and I'm thinking back to when we started and it, it you know, from my point of view, when I saw you on Insight Timer um, um, and followed up, um, it was it was with a huge amount of shame and guilt. And I love that from the get go, the contact with you, there was none of that. That was all released. There was no kind of, well, now, you know, I know why you're here, kind of going to the principal's office, you know, <laughs> you're in trouble now. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Um, and there was none of that. It was, here, you're welcome. Come in. Come bring your whole being. Whatever it is, whatever's going on, just oh. bring it. Bring it to the table. <laughs> and relax well, with it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I always joke about the, the Weight Watchers lady with her scale and her, like, whoop. How <laughs> 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 oh, I never want to be that person. <laughs> <laughs> And you don't even bring the scale into it either. Yeah. You, know, you, you say to them, Look, leave that, leave that aside. Just bring this up and, and and let's let's work with you. And you know, it's a real skill and talent that you have, and gift, um, to be able to meet people where they are, and wow. hear them, to actually hear their story. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I wanted to kind of just find out from you, like what actually made you reach out to me in the beginning? I know you, you saw me on Insight, a talk on Inside Timer. Um, what kind of inspired you to, to reach out? Well, um, I think with me from Zim and you from South Africa, I felt that there was kind of a cultural connection that went on so that was on a fairly kind of superficial kind of level um but actually not all that superficial because i knew that you would understand some of my story without me having to explain it you know which is kind of boring at my age but um i reached out because i have tried all sorts of diets and i'm i'm i'll be 63 next week Woohoo! Woohoo! Uh, i want my <laughs> these last years or maybe decades to be something where there's vibrancy and energy and health and that's uh, physical and emotional and spiritual and so on and so in a way there was a, a, a sense of desperation because i had searched and searched and not found anything that was long lasting because of those judgments because of the lack of compassion and because of the disconnect between my head and my heart, as it were, the rest of my being. And I just liked, I liked what I heard um, you talking about and the little steps and the, yeah, the, the real sense of acceptance and a kindness you brought a kindness to me that enabled a kindness within myself to be unlocked. Um, and so that's why I decided to follow up. And it was also coming up for a birthday for you and um, you offered a slight reduction at the time. So, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's Which amazing. Is, and, and the fact that you, you know, you accommodated my um, payment capacities um, as well, which, you know, in this day and age makes a big difference. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, you know, and that's the thing I try and accommodate people, you know, wherever they're at, whether it's emotions or financials, 
you know, we try and make a plan. So, yeah. <laughs> and you were just one of those examples. You were like, Stel, I am making this happen. And I just honor, just honor that you took that journey and you like, this is what I'm doing. I'm going to go see where I can find this money. And that's, that to me just shows that, you know, the level of commitment that you, you put into this, you know, and that's a true reflection of, um, you know, when we, when we want to make any change, we need to give our time, attention, and sometimes finances to what we want to achieve. And yeah, I really wanted to honor you from that perspective. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So, so tell me. It's a great investment in my life. It really has. You are so welcome. And tell me, Sheila, what was your biggest aha moment during our sessions together or oh, time together? That is such an unfair question. That really <laughs> is. Um, because there was your stop. What do they call it? Not an anagram. Or is it an anagram? Anyway, but that pausing, the pausing before eating um, was one of them. Um, yeah i think the two that i've and i've already mentioned them the breathing and the eft mm. because they're such the breathing is such a fundamental thing anyway no breath no life um and so that conscious breathing and it, you know that also brings about a mindfulness in terms of eating and in in terms of living and of course the breathing affects every aspect of our life yeah um, so it's whatever's going on with her. I'm playing with the dogs and they're getting a bit boisterous or rowdy or whatever. When the dogs are, I don't know, yesterday when we were walking through the Sherwood Forest, um, <laughs> dodging the arrows. No, 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 we won't. Um, when we were walking through there, oh my goodness, um, um, there was a poor pheasant, hen pheasant, and it went, you know, they went after it. It went taking off shrieking, understandably. <laughs> and um, I was shouting at the dogs and calling them back. And as I was shouting, I was thinking, actually, I wonder if there's another way of doing it. And I thought, this is not the time to experiment. I don't want that poor little pheasant. Now, fortunately, she managed to fly over a fence because there was some cattle nearby. Um, and she, so she got away from the dogs. Um, but I did think at the time, you know, is there another way of doing this? So when I called them back, I praise them for coming back and so on and so forth. And then I said to them, right, let's all just stand here and breathe a few minutes. <laughs> I calm down. I don't want to you guys because I'm sure you've got other things on your mind. But what I'm saying is breathing in terms of every, every aspect of our, our living and being, as it were, and the EFT, the EFT, the emotional freedom technique, and the simple, simplified, condensed version um because i guess until i'm at a stage where i can be totally zen about life um and i suspect that'll not be while i'm living and breathing on this, <laughs> this planet um it's really important to touch into what is happening emotionally and then to release that yeah and little bit by little bit by little bit Hmm. Yeah. And it's in a way it's a paradox, isn't it? Because it's like there are all these wooden slats and we're on the ocean of life and it's it's removing it's chipping away at those wooden slats that are not forming a raft at all, but they're actually preventing one from having that true engagement with the ocean and to be able to actually surf the waves. We think that this raft is going to save us. But actually, it's hindering our living. And so each time with the EFT, releasing stuff, releasing that bit of splinter, that bit of wood, releasing this defense mechanism between me and, and the ocean of life. Oh, I love that description. So beautiful. <laughs> hmm. Amazing. Well, yeah, thank you so much. And for those of you who are watching, you know, what is EFT? It's a technique called Emotional Freedom Technique. And it's one of the powerful tools that I have learned along my journey to help 
cope with our emotions, but actually be there in the moment with the emotion instead of avoiding it, right? Because we've always been taught how to avoid emotions or distract ourselves with something instead of feeling. And EFT actually helps us to do that in a calm manner. As you tap through the body, you actually get to soothe the nervous system, but still be there in acknowledgement, which is really, really special. So Sheila, I love that you just use that analogy of the ocean and that raft. Um, yeah, such a beautiful, beautiful uh, way to describe it. So thank you. <laughs> Sheila has such a beautiful way with words and, and describing things. Uh, Sheila, um, so, you know, given your experience with working together um, in this program, would you, would you recommend that to anyone who's listening today who might be thinking about reaching out and working with me? Let me think about that. Let me think about that. Hmm. Oh, definitely. Yes, absolutely. If you're willing to do the hard yards, you will be so rewarded. If you're willing to do half the yards, you will be rewarded. If you're willing to do a quarter of the yards, there will be benefit. So mm. absolutely, yes. Um, and the more you bring, the more you'll receive. So definitely, yes. And it's about more than more than just, and I'm really putting just into inverted commas, more than just a, a food program. It's, it's about holistic living. If you want to live, join this program. <laughs> I love that. Thank you so much, Sheila. <laughs> and thank you so much for sharing your beautiful words and your beautiful heart with me. Um, um, and th to anyone here listening, I'm sure you will touch a few people's hearts. I'd love for people to be able to reach out to you if they would love, if they feel a connection to working with you with some spiritual counseling. How can they do that? Um, I have a Gmail address. Um, it's spiritual direction and ceremony at gmail.com. I'm not hugely techy. I need to get my website sorted out. I've, I've started dabbling into it, but it fills me with terror at the moment. <laughs> so probably the best way is email spiritual direction and ceremony at gmail.com. Um, and yeah, and we can go from there. Beautiful. Well, thank you, Sheila. I will I will pop that into the um into the notes and to, and to my okay. website where I'll pop this this interview so everyone can get hold of you. Um, if you're not sure and you can't find her email, please send me a message at wholesomelifestyleproject.com and I will pass you Sheila's details. <laughs> thank you very much indeed. Thank you, thank you, thank, thank you, you, Sheila, yeah. for being here today. Uh, and. Um, like. I hope you. you have a beautiful day and a beautiful birthday next week. What day is your okay. birthday? <laughs> it's on it's on Tuesday the twentieth. Tuesday the twentieth. Oh, that's so interesting. My mom's is on the twenty first. So, <laughs> oh, <that's> right. <laughs> my, Amazing. My mom's brother, my uncle, used to be the twenty first as well. Oh so, wow. Yeah. Okay. Well, month. there we go. There we go. <laughs> Well, thank you so much, Sheila, for being here and hope you have a beautiful day. And you have a good evening too. Thank you. Bye.